Greetings, my noble knights, it is I, Blaze Templar. And last time we covered how to play Pikachu, but today we're going for the next starter Pokemon in Pokemon Unite, and that's Charizard. As you can see, Charizard is similar to Pikachu in the fact that it has an extremely high offensive prowess. It actually has better endurance than Pikachu and about the same mobility. Its scoring is actually a little better, but its support is even lower. Now, those are the stats they give us. We're going to actually talk about what kind of playstyle Charizard has real quick. And Charizard's a little weird because there isn't an exact correlation between him and other characters in most MOBAs that I've actually played. The closest thing I can come up to is like a tanky assassin, or the closest thing to a tanky assassin, or closer still would be a bruiser. A bruiser isn't exactly a perfect comparison as most bruisers can take a little bit more punishment or a lot more punishment than Charizard can, but where Charizard has sacrificed that staying power, it actually has gained in damage output. So that's kind of interesting that this Pokemon is kind of unique in that regard. But regardless, let's keep moving. So when it comes to mobility, Charizard's actually pretty average for the cast. However, that being said, he does have a few options that can help him escape and make him surprisingly quick if you choose those options. If you don't, is that mobility will stay average. Now, like Pikachu, Charizard was designed to play some very different ways, in particular two different ways. However, I do feel like there is a more optimal way to play this Pokemon. So we'll cover what I think the devs created for the roles they envisioned, and then we'll talk about what I think the better of those two options are and the potential for the few mix-ups Charizard does have. So, Charizard has two different styles of play the Range Bruiser and the Melee Bruiser. So Range Bruiser focuses on Charizard's more ranged options, which are the Flamethrower and Fire Blast. Oops. And Fire Blast. So these moves are ranged area of effect attacks that hit incredibly hard in their own right. So let's go ahead and talk Flamethrower. Flamethrower leaves an opponent burned, which is a pretty nice effect. It's not the best effect in the game, but uh, continuous damage over time isn't bad, especially if it's high enough damage. Unfortunately, I don't think burn does enough damage to really justify it. Still, it combos with some of Charizard's innate abilities, so you can't underestimate the value of burn. At least not entirely. Especially as <clears throat> as flamethrower upgrades, it actually increases the damage it further and the damage caused by burning, which, kind of considering that's a heavy focus of Charizard, pretty good. So the other thing I need to mention that makes burning underestimated, at least when it comes to Charizard, is that his basic attack actually deals increased damage to burned opponents. So those are all nice, and then of course he has a higher critical hit ratio with his ability. But the other thing that's really special about Flamethrower is it has a very fast cooldown. This is almost as quick as Electro Ball at only five and a half seconds. So we're talking a very quick move. And so those are always a good thing to have. Fire Blast is interesting because it's much like Pikachu's Thunder where it's the same speed, it hits an area of effect, and it deals constant damage in that area. However, I do think Fire Blast lasts a little longer, but it deals a little less damage in, over time. So, it's still incredibly powerful and worth considering. And also, the fact that Fire Blast does have the ability to reduce your opponent's movement speed means they're going to stay in the Fire Blast radius a little longer, and it also means that they're not going to want to enter that area that you've set your Fire Blast down. Also, it's only 8 seconds, so it's the same speed as Thunder thunder when it comes to its drop rate. So this particular Charizard, we're going to go ahead and kind of show it off real quick. Not going to mess with the items at the moment because that's not the focus, but that's okay. And once again, we're choosing the defensive tank, the ranged defensive tank of Slowbro because it's a pretty tanky Pokemon. And it isn't a bad one overall, and it does have a very infuriating special ability for its Unite. Or its Ultimate, as everyone else likes to call it. So anyway, go into practice options, we're gonna level- Oh, 
all the way up to 15, and as we do, we're going to switch over our opponent to Max as well. And like I said, we're going to go for that ranged focus real quick. So this Charizard isn't meant to just engage. So what it'll do instead is sit back, kind of harass the enemy with ranged attacks a little bit, and as you can see, they're quite powerful, which is something that a lot of MOBAs don't give ranged attackers. It'll sit back and kind of go for these more staying out of sight kind of thing, where it's just, I'm staying here, I'm just constantly going for this much slower focal point, and boom. So, yeah, you stick out as far as you can, and then when you're confident you can get the kill, then you move in with your basic attacks. That's kind of the focal point for this Charizard, where it pokes more. It's not trying to get an immediate kill. You have to play a little more patiently with this particular Charizard. And, of course, this area of effect with Flamethrower and Fire Blast, where it's like, Oh, that target area, I want it to be denied for a little bit. Like, oh, we gotta escape, I'm gonna plop down a Fire Blast. They're slowed in that area, and they have to go around. That gives you a chance to escape, and it helps your team out, all sorts of things. And so, this Charizard isn't as aggressive as the melee Charizard would be. Still, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have this more slow, steady-paced Charizard. This is its Unite ability, it can actually fly over territory. It does have the disadvantage of not actually being the most powerful Unite when it comes to damage output, but it does have the ability to Team Wipe, which is definitely worth something, and has to be respected. Anyway, that's kind of what Charizard as a ranged attacker looks like. He'll start with like a flamethrower or a fire blast. It kind of depends on what he's wanting to do. And then he'll just keep poking away until he's actually ready to go for the attack. Where it's like, okay, now they're weakened, I'm gonna finish them off with fire blast or whatever. Or okay, I've weakened them with the fire blast to a point I know flamethrower will take them out. And you just keep up that constant pressure until you're able to get the kills. Because you're staying so far away from your opponent and you're denying such area of effect, you actually have an interesting kind of setup where you're not really playing the traditional Charizard where you were expecting it to be as aggressive. This is a... it's still a very aggressive Charizard, obviously. I mean, just look at the damage output. Clearly, you're not anticipating it not to do fighting, but it takes its time a little more. It's a lot more patient, it's a lot more careful, and it focuses very heavily on that area denial and focuses on just kind of getting ready to build more and more momentum. It's more of a momentum building Charizard than the alternative. I do think, unfortunately, it is a little subpar because it does lose out on a lot of really special tools that the melee bruiser has, and we're going to get into that in a moment. Still, it, it definitely isn't the worst Pokemon ever. I just think that it needs a little bit more work before it rivals its alternative. So let's go ahead and hop over to our alternative build of Charizard. So this is the melee bruiser. This takes Charizard's melee focus to a completely different level. First off is Fire Punch. This move has a 6 second cooldown which is a little bit longer than Flamethrower, but it does heavy damage and it also burns your opponent and also shoves your opponent so it disrupts them. So these are all great attributes to have in a move. What's more, and this is really important, and this is what pushes Fire Punch to an amazing level. There's actually two things, but this is one of them. When it upgrades, your basic attacks actually reduce its cooldown. So, you can get insane amounts of combinations off with Fire Punch. I've seen this thing reduced to pretty much instantly. One second, half a second, stuff like that. It is insane if you use Fire Punch right. And that's why I think that move is just so good. And it does still leave a burn. It doesn't do as much damage for the burn, but it's incredible what it does do. And next is Flare Blitz. This move 
or I should actually do one other thing with Fire Punch. Fire Punch can actually get you away from a fight. This is a mobility option where if you're like, uh-oh, this fight I can't win, I need to escape. If you tilt your right stick away from the fight, just hold it away and go for the attack, it'll actually propel you in the direction you're trying to escape. So this is kind of like an additional escape button. So you can go boom, fire punch, boom, escape button, and more than likely you're more than safe at that point. So fire punch is an incredible tool. Don't underestimate just how good that move really is. And I think that in and of itself is enough of a reason to justify over flamethrower. But again, I think if they do a little more work with Flamethrower, maybe reduce the cooldown time a little bit to like 5 seconds or even 4.5 seconds, maybe increase the damage output a smidgen or something like that, maybe reduce Fire Punch in some way, balance tweaks, I think Flamethrower could become just as good as Fire Punch. But right now, I think Fire Punch is the better option. Now let's talk the other melee attack, and that is Flare Blitz. This does have a 10 second cooldown, which is pretty long. It's the same as Volt Tackle. And like Volt Tackle, this actually has the user charging forward. It hits the opponent, uh, disrupts them so it knocks them off of whatever course they were doing, kind of gives them a temporary stun effect, and it makes it so they lose action. Uh, like if they're going for a special ability, like a Unite move or something, this can disrupt that. Uh, it pushes them in a, like to the side or away to an area. They're not very specific here, but it usually just kind of bounces them is what I see it. And so that's pretty good. Also, just as important as it grants a temporary shield. This shield helps Charizard have a little bit more staying power. And when it upgrades, that crashing in actually reduces the opponent's mobility on top of that. So it does have a similar effect where it reduces mobility like Fire Blast, which is actually really good. So let's talk about how this Charizard actually plays when it comes to in-game use, if you will. And we'll talk about items afterwards, but right now, let's get into it. And I'll even try to show off the neat little combination where you combine your basic attacks to get your cooldown of Fire Punch off a lot faster, which is amazing for this Charizard. So, practice options. That should be enough. So we'll go boom, 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 boom. Boom and boom. Okay, we're fully upgraded. So, I would like the Vespa Queens to start spawning, but they're not here yet. So, what this Charizard likes to do in a fight is lead into it with that initial fire or flame bl flare blitz. It does a lot of damage, stuns them, and grants that shield. But as you can see, even here, I'm getting a ton of fire punches off. Like every single basic attack is reducing my cooldown by one. And so I'm getting way more off than you would normally. And this is just with a single target. It's extremely powerful because of that. And so you can get to spamming this move over and over again in just a short, short burst. Like, here we go. So lead in, fire punch then. Go for this, and all of a sudden, you got your cooldown, boom, and at that, you've just taken the entire team out. Obviously, it's not as easy as that in a team fight, but the same principle applies. It's just lead with that flare blitz, hit the target, continue with your fire punch because it's just got such insane cooldown. And by this point, your flare blitz is probably run out of shield, which means you're going to want to get that shield back up and keep that pressure up, and you just can do an amazing amount of damage incredibly quickly. So that's basically how this Charizard plays. It's extremely aggressive, stays in the opponent's face, uses the Flare Blitz for the shield as much as possible, and for its main damage output is actually the Fire Punch. 
while Flare Blitz is more of a lead-in finisher combination kind of thing, where it does act as a great lead-in thanks to that shield, and it just continues to offer so much utility, so much value, because it just has a terrible time taking you out, and boom, boom. See, like, this is uh, kind of insane. He did escape that time, but that's because this is a slow area. But you can see, that's kind of how this Charizard plays. Lead in, punch, continue your assault. It's an extremely aggressive playstyle for Charizard, and it's what makes Charizard so dangerous. And then, of course, oh, there's a group of enemies that I need to take out really quickly, and I need to figure out a way to do that. And remember, like I mentioned, Fire Punch actually does burn. So, you can use that to amplify damage even further. So, a lot of times, you can actually get away with leading with a Fire Punch, and then going for the Flare Blitz, just to go for that amplified damage and everything. It kind of depends on the situation a little bit there, but... You see how this can be very quickly snowballing. And at this point, he can't escape in time. Unfortunately, this move does have the disadvantage of not allowing you to pick up items or go for the skulls while you're in your Unite form. So, you might have to think twice about using it. But yeah, that's kind of how this Charizard plays. It's extremely aggressive, and it does have the ability to have quite a bit of staying power, especially if you give it things like the shed or the shell bell, where as you do damage, you recover HP, and as you do these things, it adds up very quickly. Charizard's a great snowballer, and he's a great frontline attacker. So that's kind of how Charizard is to play, just in general. So items you may want to consider for your ranged Charizard are... X speed, in case you're worried you're going to get caught unawares and you have to escape. This jacked button is always a good choice. Uh, you could consider... Let me go ahead and choose the items real quick. So items for your ranged Charizard. I would honestly recommend things like X attack as you don't really want Charizard to be on the front lines, but if you're worried, of course, X-Speed's a great choice. Slow Smoke or Eject Button are also options. I would really hesitate on Slow Smoke, but Eject Button certainly is a great one. X-Speed, if you're still worried, is another good one. But honestly, for your ranged Charizard, I'd probably suggest X-Attack. For your melee charge Charizard, Potion is a great choice just because you need to sometimes have a little extra health to help sweep up the opposing team a little bit. You could can argue that X-Attack can do something similar. Kind of depends on your preferences there. X-Speed, always a good choice. Again, Slow Smoke is actually a really good one because a lot of times the only way Charizard's going to get knocked down is if he's in a group of enemies. And so you drop your Slow Smoke, slow all your opponents, and you go with your Fire Punch to escape. And then, of course, Eject Button similar to Fire Punch. And then you can combine Eject Button and Fire Punch to get away, too. So those are all good options. Fluffy Tail is pretty silly, but, I mean, it's a great way to rack up early game experience. That's just in general, though, so I wouldn't recommend that one so much. For held items, Floatstone is the go-to item for any Pokemon, I think. But other items to consider for this particular Char Charizard, either the one, uh, well, for the ranged one, I would consider things like the Wise Glasses or the Muscle Band and even Scopelands because Charizard already has a pretty high critical hit ratio. Boosting that further, not a bad idea. And of course, things like that where they just kind of boost its health with doing damage or boosting damage are all options. Energy Amplifier, not a bad one, but considering how rarely you get your Unite attacks off, I don't really recommend that too much. 
Score Shield, that's actually not too bad because Charizard can score decently well, especially if it's lane bullied for a while. So those are a few item options. It kind of depends on what Charizard you're running and your personal preferences, I think. But that's kind of the basics for Charizard. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas from it. Oh, right, I was going to mention a potential alteration. And really, the only way you can make an alteration is because the melee Charizard is just so good, you can arguably slap in Fire Blast over Flare Blitz. This is a great lead-in tool where I'm going to go in for the attack, but I want to slow them down, get some damage in, and then get in their face, and so they're going to want to stay and fight, but they're going to be fighting in a burning area. And so, you may do Fire Punch plus uh, Fire Blast. This is actually not a bad combination for Charizard. It's not always the best option, but because Fire Blast is so incredibly strong, and you know you can capture opponents in its radius, like, oh, I know my allies can help group my enemies into a box, slap that down, you can get a ton of damage off, finish them off with a Fire Punch or two, it can really be a game changer. So, situationally, Fire Blast is a choice to consider, but I wouldn't say it's one you want to consider every time. So that's kind of the pool of moves for Charizard, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.